Hello and welcome back to Megzone. Today we shall be starting with the second phase of fluid mechanics that is fluid machinery and in this first lecture we shall be starting with the impact of jets. So to discuss about what actually is a fluid machine, it is a device which is converting the energy stored by a fluid into mechanical energy. Now this mechanical energy can be kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy or any form of kinetic energy. The energy stored by a fluid passing fluid mass appears in the form of potential energy, kinetic energy and intermolecular energy. These three types of energies are actually possessed by the fluid and it is being stored in the fluid itself. The mechanical energy on the other hand is usually transmitted by a rotating shaft. Now to start with the impact of jets, what we are going to discuss is what is a jet actually? Jet is a stream of a liquid which is coming out from an opening or a nozzle and the nozzle is fitted to a pipe through which the liquid is flowing under pressure. So the liquid must be flowing under pressure so as to have a jet with higher kinetic energy. The following cases of the impact of jet that is the force exerted by the jet on a plate will be considered. Now we are going to consider only the three cases because in CATE examination or in other examinations like SSC, JE and public sector examinations uh, from this especially from this section either very uh, less marks question like one marks question are asked or none of the questions are asked so i recommend my viewers not to waste much time on this uh, fluid machinery part because you will get hardly one or two marks question or you won't get any questions so i request you to kindly focus on fluid mechanics rather than to focus on fluid machinery however we shall be focusing main on the formulae part from where we can get the direct questions now the first part is the force exerted by the jet on a stationary plate. The first part is when the plate is not moving but the jet is being forced upon that plate and it is uh, exerting a pressure or a force on that plate. First part is the plate is vertical to the jet. The that is mean the direction between the jet and the plate would be 90 degree. Second, the plate is inclined to the jet. The plate is inclined to the jet means it is at any angle like theta. Second is the plate is curved if it is having a curved shape. Second is the force exerted by the jet on a moving plate. In the earlier section we had the plate as a stationary but now it will be moving say some velocity v. Plate is vertical okay all the three cases are still repeated here. Force exerted by a jet on a stationary vertical plate. Consider a jet of water coming out from the nozzle strikes the vertical plate. Now in general we consider that the liquid is water but if in the problem it has been specifically mentioned that we have to take a liquid with a specific gravity not equal to that of the water then we have to consider that that liquid is not water and we will consider the specific gravity or the density uh, of that particular liquid. So now this is the diagram, this is the pipe, this is the nozzle and the fluid is coming out from the nozzle with a velocity v such that it is striking this plate which is stationary. Some fluid is going in this upward direction whereas some is going in the downward direction. Now v is the velocity of the jet, d is the diameter of the jet, a is the area of the cross section of the jet, the force exerted by the jet on the plate in the direction. We are going to find out what is the force which is exerted by the jet in the direction okay where fx is fx is the rate of change of momentum in the direction of force we know from the second law of newton the force uh, is directly proportional to the rate of change of linear momentum so initial momentum minus final momentum upon time please note here that we are subtracting initial momentum minus final momentum that means uh, momentum is the product of mass and velocity so we will write mass upon time in the bracket we will write v initial minus v final so mass upon time v initial minus v final so it becomes rho a v square this is a very simple formula and we need to remember so this would be the amount of force which is exerted by the jet on the plate however if it is asked what is the amount of force which is exerted by the plate on the jet so we will simply keep a minus sign before this formula now we come to the case when the plate is not stationary rather it is moving and such that it is moving away from the jet or it can be moving towards the jet with a with a velocity small u. So capital V was the velocity of the jet, A is the area of cross section of the jet. If the area is a circular then the radius can be given and the or the diameter can also be given and we can simply find out the area by the formula of pi d square by 4 and u is the velocity of the flat plate. So here it is taken capital U but in the expression I have considered small u. So relative velocity of the jet with respect to the plate would be v minus u. Okay. 
Now the mass of water striking per second on the plate would be rho a v in the pr uh, previous case but here we will keep instead of v we will keep v minus u. So whenever there is a relative motion between the plate and the jet we will always keep v minus u instead of simple v. So uh, if we keep fx is equal to rho a v minus u whole square. So this is simply rho a v minus u whole square. So the force which is exerted by the jet on the moving plate in the direction of the jet would be rho a v minus u whole square. Okay, so this was also obtained in the same way as we have obtained the force which was exerted on the flat uh, plate or the uh, uh, flat plate when it was a stationary. Now if we need to find out the work done then we will simply multiply this force by the velocity of the plate. So work done by the jet on the flat moving plate would be force multiplied by the distance in the direction of force and hence the work done was evaluated. Now if we see that if the plate is inclined at an angle say theta with the horizontal axis then we will find that there are two components of force. One component of force is in the fx direction and the other is in the fy direction. So this normal force that we are getting rho a v minus u whole square sine theta actually has two components. So the component along the x direction would be rho a v minus u whole square sine square theta and in the y direction it would be rho a v minus u whole square sine theta cos theta and the work done would be simply evaluated by multiplying this force that is the normal force in, along the x direction uh, we will multiply it by the velocity of the plate. Now if we discuss our uh, problems for the case of uh, curved plates then we would find that the normal force which is exerted by the jet in the direction of it on the curved plate would be rho a v square 1 plus cos theta. Now in the earlier case uh, for flat plates we were getting only this part that is rho a v square but now here we are getting an additional term which is being multiplied that is 1 plus cos theta and we see that 1 plus cos theta is always greater than 1 hence this entire expression would be definitely greater than rho a v square. So the force which is exerted on a curved plate is always greater than that which is exerted by the jet on case of, in case of a flat plate and theta is known as the deflection angle of the jet. So this was all about the basic ideas and the formulas in case of the jet which is being impacted upon a flat plate when it was moving or the curved plate when it was moving. For moving cases we would simply uh, write V minus U instead of V and we can easily correlate all these formulas because they are very very interrelated and they can be easily used for solving the numericals. Now the type of numericals that are generally asked are very very simple. Only in the year of 2008 when the paper was set by IISC Bangalore we had a very very tough question which was uh, liable to be left out. It was very tough that most of the students simply left that because uh, you cannot get that question at the first go. You really have to dedicate uh, say about 5 to 10 minutes to actually uh, get that question into your head. So, uh, but all the questions that have been asked, they were not very tough. They were quite easy and most of the questions from this section are formula based only. So I request you to kindly make a short notes, prepare your short notes and highlight the important formulas that are important. So when your revision is going on, when you are revising the things, you mainly focus on the concept and you mainly focus on the formulas. You don't have to read the entire theory again and again. Now, uh, by doing so, you will have the advantage that your revision will be done very fast and since only the problems are being asked in the gate, there is no theory to write. So, from the point of view of solving problems, you need to have a good command over the formulas because if you try to solve the questions in the gate examinations by deriving the formulas in the examination hall, trust me, you're going to lose the paper and you're going to miss most of the questions that can be easily solved. And that is why in all my lectures, I focus mainly on the formulas because without the formulas, you cannot even think of solving the question. 70 to 80 percent questions are mainly based on the formula where the rest are based upon your thinking and your judgment how you can correlate the formula with the concept. So with this we come to the end of this lecture. We hope that you people are liking our lectures. Keep giving us important and valuable feedback so that we may try it, uh, so that we may have an improvement of our channel because it is probable that if one person is making all the lectures then errors 
try to creep in but still we try to avoid all these errors by keeping the lectures simple so if you feel uh, that you are facing any problems kindly share your problems with us on our facebook channel you can find us on facebook also you can share your problems on youtube also so with this we come to the end of the first lecture in the next lecture we shall be starting with some studies on turbines so thank you so much